This is going to be an overview of sensors and the signals that come from these sensors. So this is an example of a sensor pack that you might get off of a, a website. Uh, for example, you'll have manual input like a joystick. You could have uh, you know, a switch, a tilt switch. You can have things like an IR receiver that receives infrared. Uh, you can have a temperature, okay, a little temperature transistor right there, thermistor. You can also have others that sense the temperature and humidity. And again, others that will sense flame. You have the Hall effect. Uh, you know, tap module, a little spring in here that uh, detects tapping or movement and a lot of other ones. We're going to be talking about some of the common ones though. They're using industrial process control like temperature sensors and flow transmitters. If you're going to be setting up a lot of these smaller sensors yourself, you might connect these to an Arduino or something like a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi only does digital input output, but the Arduino can do analog input and analog output as well. Okay, so the very first thing we want to talk about is just in sensors, we're going to have the zero. Okay, so this is going to be the lower limit of what it can sense. Okay, that's going to be our zero value. Then the span is going to be this, uh, you know, the upper to lower limit of the sensor. And then the range is going to be the delta. Okay, so upper. Um, and lower limit, and this is the delta or the change uh, between the upper and lower. And then a lot of times we will develop a linear correlation for our sensor as well. So for example, if we want to just do a line, we'll do y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 times x, okay, x minus x1 plus y1. Okay, and that develops our uh, equation of a line so that if we have different inputs, we can predict different outputs. And a lot of times this input is going to be a milliamp, you know, 4 to 20 milliamp signal, or it can also be something like a pressure as well. So you could have a sensor that gives you a 3 to 15 PSIG. That'd be for a pneumatic sensor. So you can have either one of these. These are common. You could also have 0 to 10 volts DC, for example. There's others that are common. A lot of these sensors that are for the Arduino or Raspberry Pi, these are going to be 0 to 3.3 volts or 0 to 5 volts. Okay, so that's for uh, like Internet of Things type applications, these small cheap sensors. Uh, for industrial systems, it's a lot of times this 4 to 20 milliamps or 3 to 15 PSIG or, you know, there's a, a couple other ranges out there as well. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and just uh, do an exercise just to demonstrate some of this. We have a flow meter that can detect flows up to 200 liters per minute. And a flow of 200 liters per minute produces a sensor output of 20 milliamps. So let's just do 200 liters per minute. Okay, we have a signal and this is a flow transmitter. And this is gonna be something that might be transmitted, for example, to a flow controller and there might be a valve here that it sends a signal to. Okay, and what we're doing is we're sensing the flow and we're turning that into a signal. And this signal can either be the milliamp or a volts DC, for example, or it could also be uh, digitized and sent over an ethernet cable. But we wanna talk about uh, what this conversion is because a lot of times we'll have a, a control loop, okay, that's gonna look like this. This is our flow controller, or we might have something like a PID controller, and that's gonna be sent to a valve, and that will affect the system, and then we'll get a measurement. And this is our sensor right down here that converts this signal 
into a sensor. So for example, in this case, this might be liters per minute, and then it's going to convert it into a milliamp signal. And so the set point that we give it, we're actually going to want to convert the set point into a certain gain here. You know, it's going to be a gain between the, um, okay, I'll put KM there. That's going to be our gain between what we measure and the signal that it outputs. So the set point, this might be in liters per minute, and it's going to convert that into a corresponding milliamp signal. And then the error that we have between the set point and the PV, this is our PV, a process variable right here, the error is also going to be, might be in milliamps, for example. And then the PID controller may send, for example, a PSIG signal to the valve, and then the valve is going to open or shut. Okay, so this would be like for an analog, uh, you know, valve, and but there are other types, you know, they're based off of motors, and you send it actually a digital signal. Okay, but this is kind of traditional process control. So this 200 uh, liters per minute produces a 20 milliamp signal, and then when we have zero liters per minute, so there's no flow, then we have a four milliamp. So we use four instead of zero milliamps because then we know when the wire is cut or not, doesn't have power. Okay, so we want to develop an expression for the flow meter and give the transmitter gain, zero, and span. So let's just do the gain first of all. The gain is going to be equal to the uh, this change, the four to 20 milliamp. So 20 milliamp minus four milliamp divided by 200 liters per minute divided by zero liters per minute. So this is going to be our Km value that we calculated there. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate this. Just get a number there. We'll do um, 20, uh, 20 minus 4 divided by 200. Okay, and that's going to be 0 0.08. So that has units of milliamps per liters per minute. So I'm going to take whatever signal I had here, and I'm going to multiply it by that gain, and it's going to produce a milliamp signal. And also the same thing with my set point right here. It's also going to produce a set point that's in milliamps. And then I'm going to compare them there, and that's going to be the input to my PID controller. Okay, let's go ahead and do the uh, zero. The zero of our instrument is just going to be whatever the lowest, uh, you know, the lowest value is going to be. That's zero liters per minute. And then the span. The span is, is going to be 200 liters per minute minus zero liters per minute. Okay, so that's a span, the range of values that it can that it can uh, you know, sense. And if you go over that, it may saturate. It may just go to 20 milliamps. So if you have something like uh, you know, 300 liters per minute, it might just still say 20 milliamps. Okay, so there's our solutions right there. Just to review, you have the equation that defines the, um, you know, this is a milliamp signal for a given flow rate input. So you can plug in any flow rate right there and then calculate a milliamp signal. There's a, just an equation of a line with our gain, our zero, and our span. Okay, so let's go on to, I want to talk just a little bit about um, a very common type of sensor that's used in a lot of processes. And this is the type K thermocouple. So this is uh, a joining of two dissimilar metals. Okay, two dissimilar metals with this bead. And on one side, you're gonna have a nickel chromium and the other a nickel, nickel alamel. And the type K is probably the most common type of thermocouple. It has this wide temperature range and is inexpensive, accurate, and reliable. Just a little bit of information about a type K thermocouple. And you can see a, um, you know, a picture of it right here. It generally has this yellow plug, and you can see the bead right here. That's the actual sensor.
And you also have, a lot of times you'll have a different temperature range for that lead probe versus you know, this region right here that might be able to withstand much higher temperatures. But just uh, some things to consider is that this range is typically negative 270 degrees Celsius to 1260 degrees Celsius with a continuous temperature about 1100. And this extension wire, if you have an extension wire, that might be, you know, you might have a plastic coating or something on that. Just got to be careful about that. Okay, and the uh, accuracy. Now you can do things to improve this accuracy, like there are some methods to to get uh, additional accuracy, but just kind of out of the box accuracy, you might expect about plus or minus two degrees Celsius with plus or minus, uh, or plus or minus 0.75%. So as you get above about uh, you know 400 degrees C, uh, you know this one would be the maximum of the two, and, and then you'd get it slightly uh, you know worse resolution there. Okay, here's uh, the voltage. Okay, the voltage versus the temperature down here at the bottom. Now you can see this one is not necessarily a linear. Uh, a linear correlation. Now it might be if you had something kind of in this region right here, you know that might be approximated really well by a linear function, and then you might have another linear function that kind of approximated it in that region, and then maybe a couple more that are approximated in those regions as well. Um, or you can have a signal conditioner where you'll just load in the calibration data, and we'll just do a linear interpolation or other method between some of those points. Okay, but there's, uh, you know, here's some just some data that you might load in for the linear correlation, for example. Okay, now type K thermocouples may not be the best for every application. So here are some additional types of thermocouples that you might consider using. You have type B, type E, uh, J, and here you have K, which is the most common. And here you can see a note as well. Um, you know, use the type K unless you have a good reason uh, not to. Okay, so for example, maybe you want to go to higher temperatures. Then something like a type R or a type S might be better. They're going to be a little bit more expensive. Some of these, you know, platinum, rhodium thermocouples. And, uh, you know, this is going to be up to about 1600 degrees Celsius. It looks like temporarily you can go up to 1760 but just a sustained one. It has low sensitivity and high cost makes them unsuitable for general purpose use. So maybe just for high temperature uh, devices. Okay, so you have uh, these different ranges and different thermocouples that will be valuable. The next thing that we're gonna do, um, and we won't do it in this video, but we're gonna go through a couple different exercises, kind of like we just did right there, but we're going to, um, you know, we're gonna come over to the course website and uh, I'll just show you this, the content that we just covered right here, which is right here, the sensors and signals. And uh, you can see a little bit of information with the exercise and the solution. The next thing we're gonna do is go on to sensor design. So here's a number of problems right here that you can you know, test some of your knowledge about sensors and signals. We'll talk about a pressure sensor, flow rate, level, and a temperature sensor as well, and then also concentration. And we'll review a little bit about some of the things that we already previously covered about Modbus and data acquisition systems, how to communicate some of those values that you measure uh, back to a computer or between computers. Okay, so there are a few examples that we're going to cover next.